Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. As you may have seen the other day, uh, TGC News covered the introduction of, I guess, a coil gun by a company called Arc Flash. Uh, you know, this device uses electrical current to propel a projectile down the barrel. Now, they admitted that the actual specifications on this gun were not very impressive. Uh, you know, the thing is rather large, somewhat unwieldy. Uh, it's expensive, and yet it's not very powerful. I want to say the muzzle velocity was around 200 feet per second, uh, so it's quite a bit slower even than your anemic pistol rounds, let alone something like a high-powered rifle bullet. And yet, John Patton, the host of the channel, got really excited about it because he thinks this kind of thing is the future of firearms technology, and that with a little more development, you know, they'll be able to improve muzzle velocity, shrink the thing, and make it cheaper and more practical. Well, I did a few calculations just to provide a reality check on his predictions, and I wanted to share those with you today. So the first question that I wanted to answer with these calculations was, can you realistically store enough energy in a battery pack to power something like a firearm? Well, a 223 bullet typically carries about 1,250 foot-pounds of kinetic energy, or about 1,700 joules. Um, and so a 30-round magazine full of 223 shells would have a total uh, stored energy of about 51 kilojoules, or about 14 uh, watt-hours which is actually pretty close to the watt-hour rating of the battery that is currently powering the video camera that I'm using. So, hypothetically, if we can develop rail guns or coil guns or some other form of uh, electronic projectile accelerator, uh, the battery technology to power these guns absolutely is already available. But the other question I would have is, can that energy be delivered fast enough for the gun to actually fire? Well, if we have a 223 bullet that's accelerating from 0 to 3,000 feet per second over the length of a 16-inch barrel, then uh, it would have an average velocity in the barrel of about half of that, about 1,500 feet per second, so take it about 0 0.9 milliseconds to get down the barrel, meaning that we're imparting uh, 1,250 foot-pounds of kinetic energy in 0 0.9 milliseconds, implying that the power output or the power demand on our acceleration system during the firing process is about 1.9 megawatts. Or if we assume that our gun, our electronic gun, is running at 12 volts, that means we'd have to supply over 150,000 amps. Now this becomes a problem. Uh, for one thing, batteries are not going to supply that level of current. We can get around that by using a bank of capacitors. We have continuous drain from the batteries that charges up the capacitors, and then we can discharge the capacitors to get a sudden burst of electrical current. In this case, the current is so high that I think it would place a seriously taxing demand even on our current capacitor technology. But the bigger problem is just the conductors themselves that have to carry that current so that we can use it to accelerate the projectile. Conventional copper or other metallic conductors of a size that you could realistically incorporate into a man-packable electric firearm are not going to handle 150,000 amps of current. Uh, if you could run that much current through them, they would vaporize, and you're not even going to be able to get the current that high because they're too resistive. So I would conclude that it's going to take a major breakthrough in superconductor technology to make electric guns possible in any practical sense. And there's really only so much development work that we can do on an electric gun as a system or as a device until we have the conductors to actually make them work. So until we develop a high-current, room-temperature superconductor, 
I'm afraid that electric guns are going to be relegated to the realm of impractical novelties. And how long is it going to take us to develop that room temperature superconductor? Well, I'm not aware of any really promising leads in that direction. Uh, not saying it couldn't happen, but I'm not sure it ever will either. So when it comes to electric gun technology, I wouldn't hold your breath. Hopefully this provides some useful perspective, and until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.